the Lord is on his way. While we do not know the day nor hour of that day of the Lord, we do know what the times will look like. Anyone paying attention to Bible prophecy will tell you that those days look a lot like today's time. It is fact, not opinion, that many members of the church will be left behind. Many do not want to acknowledge or embrace this fact, but nevertheless, it is a fact. Jesus has spoken directly to the church on this point. There are facts that must be embraced, hard truths that must be realized, repentance and humility needed more than ever. This is not out of judgment or condemnation, but in love, so that we may be able to learn the true error in our ways and repent from them. If you're a Christian, it is because you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins and rose again on the third day, conquering death. You have repented and become born again. That's what makes you a member of Jesus Christ's church, his bride. This is a great thing, but what you may have not been taught or seen for yourself is that God had very specific messages to his churches in Revelations 2 and 3. There are seven churches that Jesus had a message for. They were not all positive, feel-good messages. In fact, some were very dire messages to certain churches. The Church of Philadelphia is the church that will be saved from the time when God tests the whole earth. You will find his message to them in Revelations 3, 7 through 13. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I will also keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. Revelations 3, verses 10 and 11. If you keep reading on in that same chapter, Revelations chapter 3, verses 14 through 22, there is a very specific message to the church of Laodicea. It is not a good one. Understand this message and warning was not to unbelievers. It was specifically to the members of the church. This was the message to the lukewarm church. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Revelations chapter 3 verses 15 and 16. Jesus said that he would spew the lukewarm church out of his mouth. The church in these last days are believed by the majority to be the church of Laodicea. This is because of how mixed with God and the world we are. So many of us try to live how God requires at the same time living how the world requires. This is an ever-growing impossibility as the world draws further and further away from God. Here's a brief understanding of the message. When he refers to you being hot, it is an obvious reference to being on fire for the Lord, making the Lord a priority in your life and surrendering your life and will to him. Being cold is obviously the complete opposite, as hot is the complete opposite of cold. So being cold is when you do not make the Lord a priority in your life and you did not believe in him. You lived according to the world. You were not a member of the church. This also being very easy to see and recognize. Being lukewarm is the part that troubles most. Being lukewarm is obviously a combination of both hot and cold. Please understand the two differences. A member of the church may love the Lord, but they also love the world and the things of it. These two points being in direct contradiction of each other. This is why this message is to the church. The unbeliever could never be lukewarm because they never believed in the Lord, so they were never hot. You see, while many go to church and claim the Lord as their Savior, their lives do not reflect it. They fed more on the words and direction of the world, more than the words and direction of God. They thought that they could do both, but this was not possible. It should be understood that the Word of God tells us specifically how to deal with this world, but the lukewarm church while professing to love the Lord, does not feed off his word consistently. Many know talking points and notable scriptures, but are not strong in doctrine. They do not feed on the word as their daily bread. They often bring contradiction and hypocrisy to the unsaved. Don't forget what the Lord told us in Matthew 15, verse 8. It has been proven over and over again to be true. These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. This is why they are spewed from his mouth. The Lord gave us the most ultimate gift, and they actually accepted it. This is why they are members of the church. They accepted the Lord and his grace. But instead of accepting and living through him, they accepted more of the world than of him. They mixed the hot with the cold 
and became lukewarm. The only way they would know this is by renewing their minds through Christ. The only way of knowing if your mind is renewed or not is by lining up all views, traditions, and doctrines that you hold today with the word of God. Many just compare their walk with others and or what other churches are doing. They made their tradition more of the final word more than they let the scripture be the final say on things. They partake in many practices that are not biblical, but more traditional, though they do not know where their tradition started from. Even if someone shows them in scripture why the traditions are not biblical, they hold on to the tradition more than they hold on to the word. They say things like, well, this it's the way I want to worship him. If you claim belief in Jesus Christ and consider yourself a Christian, please review this message with extreme urgency. The Lord is on his way. You do not want pride or arrogance to leave you in the church of Laodicea. It may be hard to take and realize, but it is the truth. I made truth unedited to clear up the misunderstandings, false teachings, false traditions, and general misinformation. Please feel welcome to search my site and articles and gain knowledge you may have not been introduced to earlier and share it with others. The good news is the Lord has not come yet and you still have a chance to break away from all bondage. Please do not take it for granted and give your life to the Lord in both spirit and truth. Do away with religion and be strong in the word of God. Repent and be blessed. I'll see you up there.